Ladies and gentlemen, the day has come. I'm gonna be honest, the holiday season has me busier than I expected. I've got people coming in town from family. I've got work travel coming up but I don't want to let down my community. I have self-chosen, I have elected, I have sacrificed myself today, AOC Day 9, to attempt to write it in Haskell. Now, I'm going to be completely honest. I have written this many, zero lines of Haskell in my entire life. I am going to need to be aided by chat. If you see me looking like this, I am getting help from chat. AOC Day 9 in Haskell. Let's get after it. Haskell, Haskell, time to write a white paper. You ride the camel through the sandstorm and stop where the ghost maps told you to stop. The sandstorm subsequently subsides, somehow seeing you're standing in an oasis. That is a, an intentional tongue twister. The sandstorm subsequently subsides, somehow you're seeing someone standing in the oasis. The camel goes to get you some water and you stretch uh, and you stretch your neck. Okay, weird. As you look up, you discover what must be yet another giant floating island. Thank God. This one made of metal. That must be where the parts to fix the sand machines come from. There's even a hang glider partially buried in the sand there. Once the sun rises and heats up the sand, you might be able to use the glider and the hot air to get all the way up to Metal Island. While you wait for the sun to rise, you admire the oasis hidden here in the middle of Desert Island. It must have a delicate ecosystem. You might as well take some ecological readings while you wait. Maybe you can report any environmental instabilities you find to somebody so the oasis can be around for the next sandstor sandstorm-worn traveler. You pull out your handy Oasis in Sand Instability Sensor, and that literally spells Oasis. Wow, that's a recursive backronym. And analyze your surroundings. The Oasis produces a report of many values and how they are changing over time. Your puzzle input. Each line in the report contains the history of a single value. For example, to best protect the Oasis, your environmental report should include a prediction of the next value in each history. To do this, start by making a new sequence from the difference at each step of your history. If that sequence is not all zeros, repeat the process. In the above data set, for example, the first history is zero. Yep. So because that value increases by three at each step, the first sequence of differences that you generate will be three, 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 three. Note that this sequence has one fewer value than the input sequence because each sequence considers two numbers. Yeah, so I'm, I'm doing the difference between all of three. So the length of that is n minus one. Great. Since these values aren't all zero, repeat this process. The values differ by zero at each step. So the next sequence is zero, 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 zero. This means you have enough information to extrapolate the history. Okay, okay, okay. Get the difference between these the difference between these and kind of like recursively just do them all until I get to, to the end, right? To extrapolate, start by adding a new zero to the end of your list of zeros because the zeros represent different places. Okay, hold on. So uh, you can then start filling in placeholders from the bottom up. A needs to be the result of increasing by three, the value to its left by zero. If you find the value for the next, for each history in this example and add them together, you get 114. Each line, okay, so you have to, I see, I see, I see. Like you, you could do this by hand but you couldn't do this by hand for all of the values. Okay. Okay. So Haskell, 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 Haskell. So in Haskell, I know everything is done functionally. So I'm trying to mentally figure out how like to run this as like a map. Can this be done as like a fold operation? Well, no folds reduce into a single number. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Let's get, let's get the basics going here. Main definition is an IO type. Jesus main equals do contents equals read file. And I'm doing it that because it unpacks a monad. I know that much. I've read that much when I was at work. Print, is it lines contents, right? We have to like, it, it takes all the lines out. Go, do, run, run. Hi guys, how do we run Haskell? Main, great, thank you. So now we can do something iteratively on these lines. So how do we, how do we have to approach this, right? I'm gonna add this as a comment and I know that Haskell comments are like this for some reason. Okay, so we're gonna make a new function called like handle line, which will take a string and output a integer, I believe. Oh, oh, it's like handle. Yeah. Okay. So stir like that. You have to do the actual um, parameters main good three. Got it. Okay. Sweet. So we have that. We can do this recursively. Uh, I just don't want to. Okay. We have to do the difference between all of these. Why can I not map handle line onto lines content lines contents produces a, a like this, right? It produces an array, an array of something map should allow me to map a thing onto an array of thing, produces array of thing B, where A produces B. So why do I have to do let? Oh, because we're doing, we're in a do block. We're in a do block. Okay, okay, I understand that now. Must be an expression, so, then, so this has to be an IO. So how do I return an IO? Let's print contents. 
because it has to be an IO operation at the end. That's confusing, dude. Okay, so we effectively have main print the contents and we mapped every line from the lines contents map into this function. Okay. The 21 members of the Haskell community are enraged right now. <laughs> print X. Well, okay, fine. We can do that. I don't know if an array is printable in Haskell. Two to two. Great. Sub where I do integer, integer, ah, integer, or sub of a, b equals a minus b, right? Okay, now how do I, fuck, how do I pair these? This language, I don't understand. Okay, I'm gonna piss a lot of people off right now. I don't know why you would ever use this language. I don't, I don't understand this. I don't get it. It's great. No, it's not. This is horrible. This is not a fun experience. It's like, oh, you just gotta know that you gotta zip the flip whip the F map to the, the Haskell functoid monoid. Like, are you, are you okay? So let's do zip with, I guess, zip with Haskell. Hello, benevolent overlord robot. Please produce for me a function in Haskell that given a list of integers will produce a list of pairs of the integers in that list. For example, 0, 1, 2, 3 should produce 0, 1, right? It should be produced 0, 1, 1, 2, 2, 3. Create pairs is a function that takes a list of A's input, produces A, A, yep. Create pairs blank, create, pa it's recursive? Oh, okay, so of course it's, it's recursive. <laughs> Let's do this. Let's go back. Let's go back. Let's go back. Let's go back. Handle line. This is still going to be a stir. And we'll do, um, this will be parse line, right? This will turn a list of strings. Great. And we'll do handle line. Uh, handle line takes a list of integers and returns a list of integers. And I can handle the recursive base cases here. Great. And we'll take all this shit. So we'll do map sub create pairs on on line but here all we're gonna do is just do map read word stir great so do x equals parse line and then we could do that y equal map handle line map handle line onto x and print y great okay we have that that worked that act, the fact that this worked actually is I'm um, like, okay, I feel like I'm getting into the flow. I'm, I'm learning. Are you low level learning? You're goddamn right. Oh, well, okay. Let's, let's go back and actually figure out what we have to do. Cause I, I I'm just, ha I got so happy in the fact that I actually could process the list that I lost track of like what the fuck the problem was. Zero, one, one plus five, six, six plus 15, 21. Okay. So handle line, the word line, the conditions of the line are set to this. So we can just return line. Right, I want to return. Okay, so we have that. How do we walk this back up though? Because the issue is we have we still have to do like this this tree thing. Okay, so we're gonna return. Yeah, 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 yeah. How do I get the last element? It's just last. Hold on, hold on. Did I get it, bro? Holy shit. Okay, hold on. Holy shit. Okay. Let me talk a little bit. So what do we have going on here? I know this is a lot. I kind of went dark for a little bit. Okay. We read in the file from contents read file. Let X equal parse all the lines. So effectively we take every line, we cut them up into words, then map read onto those words. So that converts them from a string input to a list of integers. Got it. Then we run handle line. Handle line is a recursive function that takes in a list of integers and returns an integer. The base case is if all of the list integers are zero, we've gotten to that bottom part and we return zero. We add zero to the the recursive tree effectively or whatever of numbers we've been adding. Otherwise, we break the line up into pairs through create pairs. We subtract them from each other, put that into handle line. So it, rec it recursively effectively says, do the cut them into pairs, subtract them until all of them are equal to zero, and then add the last element to that element. And then once that's done, we get the next number in the pattern. Okay, so let's let's put in the actual sample input and see if I got it. Okay, guys, 
Guys, guys, guys, guys, guys, guys, guys, guys, guys, guys, guys. I have a number. Didn't crash. Oh my god. I need you to understand something. I am like, I am like, uh, oh, he's a YouTuber. Like he, he's dramatic for content. No, I need you to understand that ever since Haskell has gone on the board, I have actually had nightmares about getting Haskell on this wheel. So to, to rid myself of that daily stress, I literally had to come on here on a Saturday when I didn't have to worry about not going to work and taking PTO to do advent of code and just bang it out. And here we are guys, day nine in Haskell. It's complete first try. If you enjoyed that, go watch this video. You'll enjoy it just as well. I appreciate it.